Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Micah and Steve. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Live Let Thrive. <laughs> What's up, Micah, man? I'm chilling, Stevie Stacks. How you doing? Ah, good, man. Another long week. Uh, probably not as busy as you, but, you know, I'm busy as hell, too. <laughs> yeah, man. Work, work, work. We finally... Oh, it's our second episode of 2021. And uh, coming back with a me and you episode. Let's get it cracking. Let's crack a lacking. Oh, man. So how is the Houston... How are the Houston units doing, man? Houston is good. What episode number we on? Oh, we are on episode 148 of your favorite Airbnb, VRBO, HomeAway, Turo, Lyft, Uber, all that stuff, podcast, share economy, podcast in the world coming at you from Arlington and Fort Worth, Texas. Yes, sir. But yeah, the Houston units are good. Um, they're moving. The two bedrooms moving really fast. The one bedroom, well, because we have so many, we have four one bedrooms. Three of them are moving. One of them is kind of slow. But we're working on that. But I think that's just because of market saturation. So that really made me change my strategy. So on the next pickup, the rest of my pickups for 2021, I'm doing 15 more. They're going to all be two bedrooms. So we're not even going to touch my bedrooms anymore. So two bedrooms is the way to go and the way that I'm going to move. And I'm going to try to actually set the rest of my two bedrooms up like the rest of my units, which I'm going to just do the kind of king and queen in one bedroom and then two twin beds in the second bedroom. So we'll... uh. See how that goes for us. That's 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 cool, man. Because like the way he's because two bedrooms. I've been noticing a lot on. I'm on Furnished Finder. Mm -hmm. I got you know one property in Fort Worth, one property in Dallas on there, right? So I can cover both ends. But um, I've noticed a lot more are asking for two bedrooms. So yeah. that's a that's a trend going on. Yeah, not are only you, that. Yeah, and they, they just seem to be they move a little faster, man. They, they Furnished Finder everywhere. They just move faster. I almost think it would be cool because I was thinking about that too, hopping into two bedrooms, putting one as like the total bedroom bedroom and then the other one as like an, like an, like a nice office, but you know, have obviously kind of a bed in there or something, you know, they can lay on so that that'll have, they can separate the sleep from the the work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I think definitely. that would be cool. Yeah. But yeah. So that's uh that's cool. So um, 15 more. Damn, you're rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's just, Finding the strong markets and attacking them. So where's the next one's going to be, you said? Uh, the probably next five probably going to be in Houston as well. That'll be okay. that'll push us to needing 10 more, right? 20. So, yeah, I'll need 10 more. So that I'm going to do the next five in Houston. Then the next five after that, probably Dallas. And the next five after that is probably up in the air. I'm kind of looking at uh, – I'm actually looking at up in the Pennsylvania Poconos area, and I'm looking at Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and Atlanta. Mm. So the next five, we got a little minute to ways to go, but definitely looking at plans because I'm talking to a lot of people about some strong markets. So I heard good things about the Poconos. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely so real, definitely real, looking at that area. Yeah, real quick shout out. Look what um uh, Brian Wynn from Muse Coffee sent me, man. Oh yeah, shout out to yeah, Brian. Talk Brian, another day. He's a bad dude. Matter of fact, let me kind of dive into what he asked me because he asked me a very important question I think will be very important to the fans. He actually – I just talked to him either yesterday or today. It was yesterday or today, and he asked – he found this nice little duplex for, I think, 180. Or, no, no, no. He's a single family or duplex. But he asked – he said he was for 180, and he was about to drop 20, 25, 20%, 10. He wants to drop no more than 10%, and he asked my thoughts on it. I told him my honest thoughts. I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're dropping huge loads of cash, I wouldn't – I'm be honest this is to anybody else out there who's buying. I'm not dropping huge loads of cash right now unless I know I can get it back, like, real quick. So that's why I'm kind of leaning towards the Burr method. Um, but if you are going to do that, I would just say make sure you get a good deal. And that's to anybody buying right now. The, I think the key right now is to buy right. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of – I would try to stay a little cash heavy, just a little bit, you know. And if you do put <laughs> your money out there – let it be something you can refinance, get your money back, something like that. That's my two cents. And uh, I think you wanted your opinion on it too. Um, yeah, you know how I am. I'm all about hopping from house to house and then paying 3% each time. 
Um, now, if he could get it for 10% and, and he loves where he's living right now, he don't want to move, family, all that stuff. 10%, that's not, that's not as bad as 20%. So yeah. <laughs> if he could hop in one and it's a great deal and he knows he's going to cash flow pretty good right away, uh, yeah, I mean, go for it at 10%. I guess they, that would, they would, banks would consider that your second home right? If you do a 10% mm-hmm. one, that's how it was with me when I was looking at getting a place in Padre. Yeah. So we could do 10%, but it'll be your second home. It's not like you're going to be a rental, but eh, I don't know if they check all that. Yeah. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's exciting, man. I, I try to tell all the youngsters at my work, get a duplex, man. If you in the first house, get a duplex, you know? Yeah. And, um, and by the way, Brian makes some awesome coffee. He roasts some awesome coffee. He's always sending us coffee for the show. He's keeping LLT caffeinated. We appreciate it. And I appreciate the, the awesome sh- the shirt that I'm going to wear every single day and I drink coffee. But um, on that note, on that note, speaking of talking to, to kids, to youngsters, um, here's a tip of the day. Here's a tip of the day. And I know a lot of people out there that listen to the show have rentals, like like regular, you know, house rentals or long term rentals or whatever. And a lot of people are looking in, to get into the short term game, and they've been just doing long term, whatever. And if you have rentals, you've probably gotten hit up by people, by investors, wholesalers. Hey, I like your house at so and so street. You know, do you have any plans on selling it? You know, you get these texts. I get these texts a lot. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, today, I, you know, so every now and then I answer when I ask, are you a wholesaler? And they give me the whole spiel. I'm a business, I'm, I'm a part of a business that buys property, whatever. And this, but the response was just one word, investor. And I was like, oh, this is a different one. Usually it's like kind of a, a robot response, but I was like, oh, cool. So am I. And I said, and then they didn't say nothing. I said, do you, uh, do you happen to invest in, you know, Airbnb short-term rentals? And they're like, uh, no, not at the moment. I was like, oh, okay, so you do flips. And they're like, uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, and then he like kind of confessed. You know, I said, I said that, but, but I'm, I, yeah, I am doing wholesaling right now. I'm, I'm 19 years old. I'm trying to get my foot in the door and doing some wholesaling for a guy, for my mentor. I was like, that's cool, man. That's great. You're out there hustling. I was like, you ever thought of short-term rentals? I just had this conversation with him on this text message. And mm-hmm. he's like, wow. You know, and I told him all about it. I was like, you know, if, a kid at 19, you don't have a lot of money to go buy a house or, you know, right away, you, you eventually get there and you don't have a lot, you know, let's say, and he's talked, he, he threw out their subject to, Oh, I think subject two would be cool. Like, well, that's cool too. You know, get you a subject two deal and then um, try to rent it out, whatever, and make the spread, make a couple hundred bucks. But you, especially you being 19 year old, you probably don't have a lot of disposable income. If a water pipe breaks, that's $2,000. If, uh, if a water heater goes out, that's $1,500. If a toilet goes out, that's $500. I was like, where if you're just subject to, it's like you own the house. You got to fix everything. Arbitrage, you go rent a spot, put some furniture in it, throw it on Airbnb, and you could be making a thousand bucks a month Im- immediately. And I was just, I just throwing up some games. Like, wow. You know, I've, uh, that sounds cool. And, and so I, I, I don't know if it's like a tip of the day, but there's a lot of young hustlers out there trying to do the wholesale stuff. And, you know, you know, the game trying to, trying to buy your house and whatever and get, get it some, sell it to someone else real quick. But, but that's probably the, that'll be, you know, working with young hustlers might help your business out. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Get some under your wing. Yeah. I'm happy you brought up wholesalers because I've talked to a couple this week too. Um, one thing I would tell people with wholesaling, uh, make sure that wholesaler is running his numbers right. But not only that, but uh, you you can use wholesalers. Like right now, I have on my to do list to call one back that sent me a letter. Uh, what I do with wholesalers, I'll call them, I'll answer their phone calls, and I'll get on their buyers list. Um, let them know, hey, I'm not selling. I do short term rentals, and I'll send them. I'll get their email, and I'll send them my property criteria for the area. So, and, and speaking of that, I just actually made an offer on a house today. Um, so hopefully I get it. Um, but yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Wholesalers are good young wholesalers who are out there hustling, man. Cause I got, I got like two or three properties hitting my desk today. So man, I'm just really networking with wholesalers is a powerful tool, you know, not only oh, yeah. giving them game and then just using, cause they're out there moving and grooving. They know who wants what. So mm-hmm. give them your property criteria and you can get deals. 
Yeah, yeah. I've I've done that a lot. I've said, well, I'm not selling, but I put me on your buyer's list and I send them my email. So I'm on a, I'm on quite a few wholesaler lists, you know. Definitely. Some of them try to sell junk for a whole bunch of money. <laughs> a lot of them try to sell junk for a whole bunch of money, but every now and then you see some gems, you see some nice Yeah, and then that, that's kind of what happened to me. A guy was trying to kind of piss me off cuz I had done work with him in the past and he came with some BS numbers and I'm like, oh, "Bro, come on." <laughs> And he's like, because I offered him, a, I gave him a cash price. I was like, look, I'll buy this house this much cash. And he was like, well, uh, Micah, man, I'm, I'm kind of interested. How are you running your numbers on this? Uh, tw- th- that number's kind of low. I'm like, I'm like, he didn't know I'm sitting here looking at the comps. And he's like, these houses are selling for 90 to 100K. And I'm like, looking at the comps, I'm like, man, the highest a house has sold in this area is 80K. And on average, it's 67K. And I sent him the comps and he ain't got back to me. So I'm like, come on, bro. So, yeah, man. I mean, some of them, yeah. yeah. I mean, I understand they have to make their money, but don't. I, I look at it like this. If you wholesale a good deal to somebody, the person will come back to you. You know what I mean? Mm. And, or he'll refer you business. You know, that's right, all. right, right. Yeah. So is that another Arkansas home? Yeah. 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 So it's out there right by one of them, right by one of a place that I have another Airbnb. It's like right around the uh, Air Force base. Oh, Those nice. are really some real hits. Them Air Force bases. So how many you got in Arkansas now? I two. Could I have three or four? Three, three. <laughs> I think I have three. Oh, I'm about wow. to have. I'll have. I close on my 1031 sale on the 10th of next month. So oh. by March, I'll have four out there. Someone bought it, huh? Uh, yes, yeah, under contract. So I'll have four out there and then I'm getting another one. Hopefully if this deal, if this guy comes back and says he'll accept my offer, that'll be five. So do you get full asking or close to it or, uh, what do you mean full asking? Uh, for what you're selling. Did you get full asking for what you selling it for the house oh, the condo? No, well, a little bit under, I, I purposely overpriced it. And then they, okay. they came in like right where we wanted it. They came in like one seventeen five, and I was like, cool. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah. You're going to leave it furnished for them or they don't want the furniture. So I'm oh. gonna, that, that makes it easier. I'll just take it all out and then mm-hmm. we'll put it in the next one coming up. Cause it's some real nice furniture in there. So we're just mm-hmm. going to take everything out, put it in the next unit. You know, okay, and, uh, cool. that saves on, you know, saves on furniture costs. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Sweet, man. You're moving. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to, how's that? How's How are your, uh, how are your unit? You got a third one up, right? The Fort Worth unit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I told you a little bit about that, um, <laughs> and that's a that's a little bit of a lesson. They they uh, I got hit up by the the city ordinance guy. Yeah, and he called me and he and he's let he informed us. He informed me. He's like, yeah, you know that y'all can't do um, short term rentals in that building. And so um, I thought I everybody told, else was doing it though. They're all everybody's doing it. everybody's doing their thing and they t- they 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 straight up told me ah just ignore that guy you know don't worry about it just don't take his phone calls this and that and i told him no um i've been through this with arlington and uh, i'm not gonna go through this stuff again getting these big old fines and stuff like that and getting misdemeanors no i'm, I'm gonna i said y'all can keep do your thing you know whatever i'm just gonna i'm gonna just transition it to a to a long-term um uh, corporate rental mm-hmm. And so, so that's my, the, the dude was super nice. He wasn't the a-hole that the guy from the Arlington was. <laughs> I don't know. You dealt, you, you dealt with that guy? The Arlington yeah, yeah, guy? yeah. I just got out of court yesterday about it. Oh, okay. how, how did that go real quick? Uh, they were about to, okay. So we were end up being late because, you know, I work for the city, man. I can't just take off because I do engineering. So uh, I ended up being late. So they were like, hey, well, you're late. So you can't, you can go downstairs and reschedule. So we're dancing in the line and mocking you like, man, let's just pay this and leave. But the lady comes out and she was like, hey, Michael, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to come back. She was like, yeah, all you do, you can just come back and uh, we'll schedule you the court date. And I'm like, and it was my second time up there because the first time I went up there, they were like, oh, well, no, the, the first time here, it's just to schedule you a court date. I'm like, I could have done this over the phone. Come on now. So they're wasting my time at that point. So the second time I come back, I'm for court, but that was on my fault for being late up there. But she was like, I'll let you come back. And I'm like sitting there looking at the timing on it. And I'm like, I done ran up here twice. I'm like, so she was like, if you pay it though, I was like, what if I pay it? She goes, if you pay it, it's not going to go on your record. And she goes, it just goes as a, a citation. And I'm like, she goes, but if you do it again, it goes, uh, she goes, it's going to be like, I guess 
moved up to a misdemeanor or something. Mm-hmm. And I told yeah. her, Hey, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Cause the first one was fake. And I'm like, and I told her, we told her what happened. And she was like, Oh man, if you guys come back, you know, you can come back and explain it. I'm like, the time I was like, man, I'll just pay it and move on. But yeah, it sounds like, cause the one guy who kept saying, he was like, yeah, man, this, your case sounds like it'll probably be thrown out. If you know, if you have proof that you weren't advertising it. So I was yeah. like, forget it. I ain't got time. <laughs> time is money, man. Exactly. Being going up there every week. Yeah. So that happened. So, but it's, it's cool. I think, you know, the, the rent's low enough to where we'll be able to get um, a short term. I mean, a long term, um, like a travel nurse or something in there. We've already had a, quite a bit of interest in it. So we have someone all the way through the end of this month. And then after that, we should, I mean, Here's the thing. We, sh- I mean, even if I lower the price just to get someone in there, it'll just be a, a, you know, a headache off my mind and stuff like that. And I can, you know, move on to doing and doing the business business, you know, doing the um, the management company. And I was, I was also something that happened. Um, I got hit up on Furnish Finder, right? But and I thought it was for the Fort Worth one, but it was for the Dallas one. And I was, you know, talking to this dude. He just, just in the, you know, you get this random phone call and you see a number and I don't answer all these numbers that I don't know, but I saw this one and it said Louisiana on it. And I was like, hmm. So I went ahead and answered it. And it was this guy asking about the, you know, it, it turned out to be the Dallas one, but I thought it was the Fort Worth one at first. Anyways, whatever. And um, he said, I really love it. I'm interested in, in, in renting it from you, this and that. He goes probably month to month. But um, would you give me a discount if I do uh, like a six month lease? And I was like, oh, okay, so you're talking about the Dallas one, um, the price on that one, you know, because I have a management company run it for me. They take a chunk out of it. So it kind of would leave my margins really thin. But let me talk to them. Let me talk to them and see what I can do, if I can move at all, any wiggle room. And so, you know, I called up, you know, my management company, talked to them and everything. And actually, yeah, the, the CEO she was telling me, you know, you know, Stephen, you know, usually we would charge the keep charging the 15 percent. But being as like people are, you know, kind of struggling right now and the covid and all this stuff, we understand and we're cool and we're cool with just waving it all together and you could deal directly with him. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so I told, yeah, no, I was like, it never, it never hurts to ask. Right. Yeah. And so um, so I told the guy, I said, like, yeah, man, you know, I could actually I have a they drop the rate a little bit i can i can have a little wiggle room so uh how about um 1925 1925 it was i was putting it for 1950 a month right mm-hmm. my lease is 1150 a month i put it for 1950 a month on furnish finder and i said if you do the six month lease how about 1925 i know it's not a whole lot but they're you know they they still check their chunk yeah that sounds good man let's sign it let's, let's sign it tonight i'll send you the deposit over blah blah, blah. And, and that was yesterday on my day off, right? Which is crazy because, uh, well, you know, they didn't call me for overtime. So I was like, I, I, in my mind, I was like missing out on some money because I didn't get the overtime call. But I just landed like $12,000 worth of rental money by sitting here and, <laughs> and catching the big fish. Right. Plus, I was able to to negotiate with my management team because this is how I came at them. I didn't, you know, I was nice and friendly. I was like, listen, I, I put this listing up on Furnish Finder myself. I found the guy myself. I talked to him. I negotiated the deal myself. I have the contract ready to go. Y'all still, y'all are still wanting to take 15% from this deal. And, and then, so as she saw it like that, she's like, you know, that's, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And since you're doing all the work and you did the listing, you know, that's, that's fine. We'll just wave it this time. And so say that saves a lot of money right there. Never hurts to ask. Never hurts to ask. So, so yeah, man, I think and people dog Furnish Finder, but they just, I think the thing is with Furnish Finder, as soon as something pops up, you got to hit them up. You got to work it. You got to say this and that. You got to, hey, you know, I know your price is only this much, but, you know, how about we can make a compromise and I can get you in for this, you know, and you, you can't just sit there and, and wait for a deal to happen to you, you know, you got to go make the deals. And that's with anything, not just Furnish Finder. I figured out how to even... No, happy. I was just just talking about this on Clubhouse. I've figured out how to how how to make those nurses pay more and them being comfortable paying more. And I was telling them this on uh, I was having a Clubhouse chat and I was telling them this. I was like, the way that I've learned to make them pay the higher price, like right now, I'm making one pay the higher price in Ark in one of my Arkansas units. Um, once you brand yourself and have a place for them to go that's yours, they're more than likely to pay your prices. Um, and the reason how I know that is because now on Furnish Finder, 
first off, if by the way, if you want to know if people are calling you from Furnish Finder, you just set up a Google Voice as your Furnish Finder number. Then you'll know. Then you can like redirect them straight to your Google Voice, and then Google Voice pops up on your phone. And you know it's from Furnish Finder. Oh, That's smart. how I do it. Um, but what I do is, um, I, I, I as soon as I talk to them. I just act like, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm their concierge service. I'm like, um, if you really like to book their places, you can send them an inquiry on their website, sharebnb.com, and you can go and view all their places. And then one lady, she called me, she's like, oh, your places are really, really nice. How do I, uh, how do I book it? No questions about how much it costs. She's seen it. <laughs> she booked it and was fine with it. Um, I, I really noticed, man, branding is really, really strong because when people think you have, know you have a brand and they want to stay with that brand, they're willing to pay a premium. And that's like anything, just like you go to Chick-fil-A for good customer service. You know what I mean? So it's Mm -hmm. like you got to brand yourself in 2021 and then you don't have to go through those negotiations. You're just going to, a person's going to look, move forward if it's not for them. And if they want it, they're going to stay with you, you know? So that's one thing I would say it's very strong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. People trust Apple products. It says, cause it has a freaking bitten apple on it, right? Exactly. It's the brand (laughs) of it, you know, and it, it might cost more, but Hey, it's the brand of it, you know? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so that happened. Um, let me see. Uh, blah, 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 traveling professionals. Oh, this is the thing that I thought I'd run by you. And I, of course, I don't know how I would be able to work something like this, but travel professionals such as travel nurses. And I've talked to, I've talked to quite a few and they, you know, oh, we love your place, but it's a little too high, blah, blah, blah. And plus I have to pay the mortgage back in my, or I have to pay my rent back in my, where I'm from. And mm-hmm. it's gonna, so how I'm, I'm th- I hear the story a lot and, and they are getting paid a lot, but they, they, they have a point. They're, they're still paying their mortgage or they're paying their rent back where they're from and they're doing this. I'm like, man, they get a stipend. Don't let them fool you. But go ahead. Yeah. 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 They want to keep as much money in their pockets as they can. And that's cool. Hey, you know, that's everybody's doing their hustle. But if you could, Oh man, if, if someone could figure this out, and you know maybe be one of us talk to him and check it out you know i could turn your your ho- your home or your apartment back there into a into a cash flowing airbnb and um you know you could i'll run it for you, you don't have to do nothing and then plus i'll give you a break on the rent here so you'd be paying cheaper rent here plus you'd be making money i don't know i just think they're leaving a lot of money on the table like if you and i had to travel for business we'd probably rent out our places <laughs> when we went right you know we're we're comfortable with it a lot and more and more people they're jumping into the um, short-term rental game. And I think that's a, that's a, I mean, travel nurses, man, there's, they're tra- hopping all over the place and they're leaving probably pretty good locations behind that you could Airbnb at. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Travel nurses are, you know, they, they, they're a little cheap at times, but yeah, you just got to know how to <laughs> talk to them. But yeah, that could be a nice little play. That's a, hop- a very creative strategy. Yeah, I hopped on some of those, you know, I've got on all the freaking travel nurse Facebook pages to try to, you know, just put my, my rental out there. And, I, and I'll see like listings like, hey, you know, over here in um, freaking Minnesota or something there, we're paying $101 an hour plus we'll pay your, your travel expenses and your rent. I'm like, they're making over $100 an hour. And that's probably not overtime. That's probably just the base pay, man. <laughs> That's yeah, that's base pay, and then they make six hundred dollars a week stipend just for housing. So they get twenty four hundred dollars a month on top of that for housing. Dang, they're getting freaking paid, man. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it's the thing with travel nurses, man. The more you go to them, the more they're going to try to negotiate. Don't go to them. Let them come to you. That's how I've really found it. Like, because they know, okay, if he's coming to me, they're you look desperate to them because there's so many of them in demand. Me, I'm like, uh, take it or leave it. This is the price. Uh, if you don't want to fit the price, you're not our customer. Mm. So, I mean, you got to, it's kind of like that with them though. But yeah, that, that's a good little strategy. That's a creative strategy you just put out there. Though. Right, right. Yeah. And um, real quick, eh, it's just a little topic. What is, um, I finally got a Keurig for mm-hmm. the house. Are you, you're, you're a Keurig believer? You like I've Keurigs? Using, I, it depends on which property. Some, some of them I use and some of them I don't. I, uh, the thing about Keurigs, they get dirty and it's hard to clean them. Oh, I don't okay. even like using other people's Keurigs due to the videos and stuff that I've seen. So I kind of <laughs> we got moving back to the old school coffee maker. Yeah. yeah you can't but, just run, run like vinegar or something through them and clean them out. No, nah, it's spots in there because of how it runs. But oh, I mean, they're not to discourage you from using it because there's still yeah. certain places that I have them. But uh, we've gone back to the normal coffee machines. The only thing I like about Keurigs is you can make like 
uh, hot chocolate in them. It doesn't have to be coffee. That's the biggest thing I like about carrot eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking too, like, cause I've, in all my rental units before, I've always set up just regular, you know, Mr. Coffee, little coffee maker, mix a uh, six cups or whatever. And, um, but I, I got one from my house and it's, it's been pretty cool. My wife loves using it. You know, she'll make her little hot chocolates and stuff like that, like you said. And um, so I was like, man, I guess I could see, I could see spending a lot of money on something like, like a, a nice Keurig if, if the place calls for it. Right. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go like a really high end place, you're making, you're, you're charging like $500 a night or plus, or, you know, you want to really pull out all the stops for it. Right. Mm-hmm. You want to have all the conveniences. You don't care if they steal a few pods on the way out. You're paying 500 bucks a night. Yeah, that's true. If you get to a high-end place, get you a nice little Keurig and all that, yeah. Yeah. And, um, oh, I even had this on here. Two-bedroom units is the big play for 2021. That's, yeah, you already said that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, how to provide value with your units. I keep hearing this word over and over again. You must and, be listening uh, to some good old Alvin Cavalier. Yeah, Alvin Cavalier, yeah. Talk about, he said you got to provide value. Yeah. And, how do, and how do you provide value? That's one thing we're working on this year. Because right now I'm, I'm more or less working on branding. Mm-hmm. And once I get my brand, like my brand is really strong in Arkansas. Um, you know, value is one thing, but at the same time I'm bringing more branding. So then they're coming directly to me. Um, value is really, really strong if you're an Airbnb host. Um, it's strong too if you're on the short-term rental operator side because I'm, I'm starting to notice there's a huge difference. But uh, that's one thing I'm working on is our, our value side. But right now our value is like really top, high-end, clean, larger places for families. So that's a model. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Bigger spots. Yeah. Um, one thing that's been that's been happening to me for a while is you know I have I have the management team running things and how they like to do it is and they run everything through Logify and they send these they're always sending these links to to the guests coming in please go and fill out this form you know they want them to fill out this form before they get any of the information on how to check in the place and it's man I say it's about 50% hit or miss cuz people don't I mean, people are flying in, they're tired, they want to get to a place and open a door, they don't really, and they're busy, and they don't want to sit there and go open a link from a link and then try to fill out this whole long thing about themselves, about their stay, about all that stuff. Do you make, do you make guests do that? No, I just capture that information through the Wi-Fi. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I, yeah. I've, I've been getting, I've, I've told them, I've, because I, I've seen these guests like <laughs> on my camera, on my ring camera, shout out to ring mm-hmm. um, wrestling with the, trying to get the code and this and that. And, and I'll, <laughs> I'll holler them at the ring, at the ring camera. Hey, can I help you get, you know, and they'll, they'll say, who, uh, who are you? Um, I'll ask him, you know, what, what place are you trying to stay at? And they'll say, Oh, I'm so-and-so trying to stay at the green dream. Okay. You know, well, here's, you know, here's the code. You probably didn't do the check-in stuff yet, but here's the code. And I get them in the place. Cause it's like fucking like sometimes it's like 10 or 11 at night and they're, they're they have to, and then well, the VA is not being responsive. And so what locks are y'all using? Oh, just the ones that come with the apartments, just the coded lock that they have. They change them every like week or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, they don't let, they didn't know. I asked if we could switch them out with some August or something and they, they won't let us. Mm. so that would be yeah that would be great but the thing is they they're so particular they really want all these guests to sign these like forms and stuff before they check in and i've been getting i've been getting dinged on the reviews for that people are like oh it was a nice place this and that but man the the check-in process is a headache it's a pain and i'm happy you brought that up because i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of touch on that with arbitrages This is what I've noticed with arbitrages. There's more systems that need to be put in place with the arbitrage, for one. Two, I'm looking at my numbers. I'm like, my ones that I own kill these numbers. Like, I'm talking murder these numbers. Like, I mean, you can – arbitraging is good for scaling faster, right? And I'm using the arbitrage method to scale this year at a really, really fast rate. But I'm just like – all the systems that have to be put in place, all the directions you have to give with the house, you just pull up, boom, here's the address. Here's everything you need. Everything's automated. I forgot like the, even bro. 
I have over 400 timeshares, and they're easier than these arbitrages. I'm like, <laughs> bro, I'm serious, man. Like, it's just like, damn. I could see what I see the value in doing it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, man, you know, and it's also, I'll even tell people this. If you're buying right, arbitraging is more expensive than starting up than buying real estate. If you're buying right, you know what I mean? I literally mm-hmm. only spent four grand out of pocket after the refinance to get my one three bedroom, two bath house that cash flows me $2,000 a month up and running. Mm. These arbitrages, I spent 20 something grand to get all five of them up and running. Mm. Had to get them up and running. Then we got to focus on the systems to move. I'm like, if you know how to buy real estate right and you know how to arbitrage, that's the killer right there. You're, mm-hmm. you're a deadly assassin. But if you only know how to do one, you don't know. You're going to – I'll just say this. You're not going to maximize your cash flow. But I will say, like, arbitraging has its headaches. Yeah, yeah. I remember back in the day you had some in Dallas, and then you kind of stopped doing arbitrages for a little while, right? Uh, Well, yeah, I shut some down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And but yeah, arbitrage is about systems, but go ahead though. No, I was asking why, why you shut those ones in Dallas down. Were they not making enough for you? Well, yet not only that, I was in one bedrooms and they mm. were oversaturated. These mm. ones, we, we got them at good deals. So, I mean, certain things they can, they, they, they're, they're priced at a price point where they can be a little slow and then we can pick it back up and ramp it back up. Plus it's January. January is always slow, mm-hmm. but um, you know, the one bedrooms are just kind of saturated at a point, but here we got, we got them on really good deals. But at the same time, I'm just looking, I'm like, man, these processes are crazy, but you just have to, you really have to have someone on the ground. You have to have boots on the ground. Now, when you got your 10 over there in Houston, uh, how, how below market value you think you got them? About 15%. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. We got like a two bedroom at like 13 and the one bedrooms are all like a thousand seventy five to I think the most on the one bedrooms is like eleven thirty ish mm. and those places are usually a little bit more because we went in and bought them in bulk no no you said you're going to pick up some more arbitrage. did you figure out a way to to get the setups done cheaper yes um the way that I found that she did really do it at a cheaper rate. It, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the designer and then without a designer. Uh, and also, I'm going to touch on some things with the designer that you have to be very weary of if you're going to do this strategy, if you're going to try to use a designer. So let's say you go with the designer. What I would do tell you to do is get the 0% APR. Oh, no, no, no. Matter of fact, you might be able to get away with not getting a 0% APR if you go to a furniture store that sells everything who's linked with Synchrony Bank and they'll might most likely give you an 18-month 0% APR, link up with them, get all your furniture through them, or tell your interior designer, hey, if we work with you, this is who you're going to have to go through to get everything that, that we need, and you go that route. Okay. You know, and then you get everything from one-stop shop, 18, you, know, you ain't got to pay no interest for 18, 12 months to 18 months, and you get everything paid off. That's the cheaper route I found. The other side, now, if you do it the other way, you, of course, you um, do what you do this exact same thing, but without the designer, you just uh, have somebody, you can get a task rabbit to have them deliver it and then get a task rabbit to go set everything up for you. And this task yeah. rabbit charges like 18 to 20 bucks an hour. Um, the way that I'm looking at it, the problem that I ran into with on the designer side is the designer kind of has to know Airbnb because they have to know, you have to know like, okay, what type of TVs to put in here? Make sure they're all TCL Roku's. Don't get nothing off brand. Make sure the, the lock, you know, it, it wasn't as turnkey as I thought it would be. Mm. So that was one thing I had to really notice down. You had to buckle down with the designer because some designers might know Airbnb. Some of them don't. I would suggest get a designer that has an Airbnb or knows Airbnb. So that would okay. be my suggestion. That makes sense. Yeah, because you're using a designer friend of a designer that does know Airbnb, but it was it was their friends doing it for you. Yeah. Okay. Are right. you plan on using them again or going a different route? 
Uh, we're still trying to see because they're based out of Dallas, and these next ones are going to be in Houston. So we'll see. We okay. have to, we, we might. We, we just have to come up with a different process of how to get everything delivered because we had a lot of delivery issues. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Because <laughs> we'll Christ- of Christmas time, right? Yeah, yeah. Christmas time, you know, stuff being delivered outside, stuff got delivered, shit got delivered to the wrong damn address. It was just like, yeah. So, yeah, it, still, we'll see. They steal any of it? We're, yeah, we're pretty sure they did. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So, we, we, we're, 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 we're looking into all options. So um <laughs> one thing one thing that happened and um here's a here's a big tip for everybody and a, another big tip Steve big tip of the day um don't share don't share internet with your neighbor especially like you know try to save money you got an arbitrage up and running you got a neighbor that's got internet hey you know y'all two should share you know a friend of y'all two should share and, and split the split the internet cost and blah 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 works out great you know what's what you got to watch out for if that person's in another state like california and they really ain't watching their (laughs) they ain't watching their unit too good and they don't care what's going on they trust a management company to do everything correctly for them and um and the internet goes out and the motive's in their place so you're trying to contact a host that really doesn't give a flip about their airbnb and tell them hey could you get your internet back on (laughs) because Mm -hmm. my my guests that checked in because it happened like these the like a week ago, the guest checked in on a Friday and the internet went out that morning. I could tell the internet went out because my camera went out, right? And it said, there's no internet, you're offline. So I, I started messaging that person I shared the internet with. They're very unresponsive. Finally, they responded, well, I checked the app and it says it's offline and I can't get it back to going online. And I'm like, okay, could you could you check with um, the maybe the management team? Maybe they can go reset it or... Blah blah blah. Of course, like I said, they're in California. They don't give a shit. And um, is this the guy from Dallas you were talking about? The guy, the guy from Dallas. The, is this your unit in Dallas? I thought he was. No, sharing- no, 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 no. Oh, I, I am sharing. I am sharing with a dude in Dallas. But I'm sharing. I have the modem. He's across the hall from me, and he's sharing with me. So that's fine. If you share, you there? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. At least. Um, if you have the modem in your in your unit and you're sharing with someone else, that's and they're giving you half the money, that's perfectly fine because you have control. You can go on the app and fix it, or you can call AT and T or whoever and then get them to fix it as soon as possible, right? But if the modem is in someone else's unit and and they really ain't watching there, they don't care about their Airbnb because they got their full time gig and they're in another state. They you know they just you know gave their money to someone to give them an Airbnb then you're screwed, man, because you're relying on that person on one of the most important things of doing Airbnb. You got to have freaking Wi-Fi, dude. You got to have good, strong Wi-Fi because then the TV don't work. Their laptop don't work. I mean, it's... And so... uh, Hold on. So let me kind of get this straight. So they agreed to split internet costs with you, right? Yeah. Yeah. She has the modem in her place, and uh, yeah, okay. Sarah actually linked us up. She said, "Hey, you know, so and so over here that I did the unit for, she has internet. If you want to share with her." And then I said, "Oh, okay, that sounds good." And yeah, I would have, uh, I would have flipped that. I would have been like, "Hey, how about I, you, you use, they use my internet." And uh, what I would have done was I would have put my stay fi in there, and then they connect to my internet and get my direct booking links back to come back. See, that's smart. But her unit was set up first, and she already had internet, so that's the. Oh, only I would have told her to cut it. Like, you can just pay me half. <laughs> on the cost. Matter of fact, I'd have been like, "Look, don't even pay me for the internet. You just use my internet, and uh, you ain't even got to pay me, and I'll, I'll help you save money." Oh wow! Get their stay fi going on. That's what I do on my, my our units down in Houston. I took we have a we have four units in one building on uh-huh. one sixteen hundred block. Yeah. So I just put. We were like, man, we could use one. I'm like, no, put one in every single unit. So it broadcasts out to every single place in that entire building, and it's listed as share BNB free Wi-Fi, and everybody can connect. And then I can grab all their information, and it direct links them back. So if they join, they join it back, and they can they now see that they can book these places all around them. That's awesome. And and how is how has that worked out for you so far? Have you got any uh, leads? Oh yeah, yeah, a bunch of leads. Um, the leads are really, really killing it right now. We just got to get the, uh, get them to actually book. But our, um, 
our Google's really blowing up. I, you, I, I've been posting my Google analytics, looking at that. It's really blowing up. It's really being really efficient. Um, our, uh, our email marketing campaigns really well is doing was well, doing well as well. And I'm really trying now just trying to get the direct bookings to come in. But right now I'm looking at a few systems down there that we need to get in line and then I can focus fully on that. But yeah, all 2021 is marketing. So yeah, if I was you, really, I'd go back to all of them, get, get a stay fi stick it in your box, tell them, hey, y'all can use my internet if you want and cut back on cost. And you can kind of explain to them, hey, I have a really strong extender. It'll reach you guys. And boom, then all you got to do is log into stay fi to see if the internet's up and it's offline and get AT&T on the horn. That's a, that's a good idea. And if it wasn't, and if they didn't like kind of... Um handicap me with the whole only i can only do 30 days or more i might I, I would consider that really but if it was an airbnb yeah yeah i could see i could see it being worth well if they're that. doing my, my thing is this though if they're all doing 30 days or less i wouldn't do it till they, i wouldn't stop till they gave me a fine or something then i could say i could i could play the dumb card I, I, unless they you got to show me something you know what i'm saying if it's 20 12 15 people in there doing airbnb I would have you have to give me like a fine or something because it's like it's too many people in here doing it. You know what I mean? I'd probably right. ignore the dude too. Because <laughs> I mean, you gotta. I don't yeah, know. I just, I just, it caused me a lot of stress and headache with dealing with the Arlington thing, and I, and I just want to do everything on the up and up right now. I don't, I don't want any, I don't want any issues. I just want to clean. You know, I want, I want to be able to sleep well, stuff like that. You know, that's just me because I don't like those letters coming to my house, summoning me to go to court and stuff. I just, I hate that shit. That's facts. Yeah. So, um, what was I gonna say, man? I was, uh, we were talking about, oh, the internet, and um. Man, it just slipped my head. I was gonna ask you something. Um, go to another. Oh, we we you, we had mentioned we had talked before about about Virginia, and um, my management company has a bunch of units out there, right? And they said, mm-hmm. man, uh, yeah, close to the close to the capital. And they said people have been canceling. They've been canceling left and right because they're gonna, you know, they were booking for the inauguration. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's going bad. So people are canceling left and right, man. They don't want to be out there during that. That's going to be freaking, man. This is this is some craziness going on. Um, but yeah, so yeah, heart goes out to people in Virginia, especially you know the Airbnb beers who ain't who getting a lot of cancellations right now. I don't you know how Airbnb would handle you that. Places in Virginia. Do what? You manage places in Virginia. No, the uh, my uh, my management company. The, uh, the, I'm sorry, not mine, but the one that manages my Dallas units. I don't want to keep saying. Oh, that. oh yeah, I know you're talking about. Okay, okay. They have a so, bunch in Virginia, and, and they're getting canceled. And they're getting yeah. She she told me they're getting a bunch of cancellations after all this stuff that went down at the White House. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. He ain't going out without uh taking the whole country down with him. I guess, man. I don't know. This this is some craziness going on. Dang, I didn't think about the Airbnb market out there. That's crazy. Uh, I'm sure there's. I'm sure people are calling up Airbnb left and right. Hey, hey, I want to cancel. I want to cancel. <laughs> and they're probably, you know, an Airbnb will probably fill into that extenuating. Well, create an, another extenuating circumstance policy for them to cancel, penalty free. And I, got, man, I got a story about that, man. Um, I'm not gonna say the guy's name, but he posted something real interesting. Um, I think he's a fan of the show, but he, he posted something. And he was showing. <laughs> He was pretty much telling people, he goes, look, I'm not telling you guys to get off Airbnb, but I'm just going to show you an example of what a guest, the power that a guest has with Airbnb. So he went through his friend's account. He booked his own Airbnb through his friend's account. Um, He stayed there, I think, like two days. He purposely stayed there. And he goes, after he checked out uh, from his friend's account, remember he's staying in his Airbnb from his friend's account, from his friend's account, he went and um, told Airbnb that there was roaches in the place and he got pictures off Google, sent up the Airbnb and uh, cause, okay, let me kind of go you the backstory. He found out how to do it on the dark web and he wanted to test it and see if it was true. Mm. So he sent the pictures, told Airbnb, Hey man, this place had roaches, sent pictures from Google and uh, they immediately refunded him the money on mm. the guest side. And he posted it and he was like, 
this is something I just kind of want you guys to take into account. He goes, this probably not is not going to happen to you. He goes, but it can. He goes, the problem is guests have the power to do this. And I, I posted it on uh, my, our Instagram. And I said, man, I want y'all to go check this out for what he posted. And they posted and take a look at it. And a lot of people were like, yeah, man, that's why I'm going. I'm trying to do direct bookings as well. Because, you know, Airbnb, they, they, they have a real. Mm. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. Now, now, I guess, I guess what, what, what tripped me out? I, I did see that. See, I saw you post that, and yeah, it's a trip. But does he risk getting his getting hurting his like um, his rating and stuff by that by doing that to himself? Oh, he, he he would have to rate. He's rating himself. I, yeah, I know through his friend's account. And, if, and apparently, if he, apparently, it would be a bad rating if he's saying he got cockroaches and all that stuff, right? His units. yeah, but his, he would have to rate that. He's just saying he went through Airbnb's system, got mm-hmm. it, and they, he immediately got a refund. Okay, and he didn't leave a review, of course. I yeah, guess he that. didn't leave a review, of course. But and okay, and Airbnb is not going to come down on him and say, "Hey, you need to clean up your act." I don't know. Probably I don't will. Know. I'm just asking. Probably will. I'm pretty yeah. sure they would. Cause I think I, I'm, that's the part I'm asking about too. Did Airbnb come down on you? And uh, he said he sent some additional documentation. I'm gonna reach back out to him, but it, it, it does show you like that's also an issue with their their IPO. Like if you can immediately refund a guest like that without really getting true proof, how are you making money? Ah, but they're keeping all the fees that they charge the guests. You saw that, right? <sighs> <laughs> yeah. they're still yeah, gonna get their money the host ain't gonna get their money but there's airbnb's keeping their fees man i saw yeah. that see and the problem is okay if the guest disputes the guest wins they can't go get that money back from the guest so they just make their money you're right they make their money off their fees off their fees they're gonna get paid regardless they don't give a shit and so i started just that the first time like uh, a few weeks ago some lady canceled like the day before and and then she didn't, she didn't give us a message or nothing. She just canceled. And it was for like a couple of days. Mm-hmm. And I guess it was like 300 bucks we were going to get paid. And so, but like a couple of days later, she's like, hey, y'all only gave me like 200 something back. I need the whole 300 something. And I was like, look. She sent this to you. She sent it to us in the, in the okay. messenger, in the Airbnb messages. And I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I thought we were flexible. I thought she can get out of that, you know, scot free, you know, and tw- right. within 24 hours or whatever. And um, I looked it up. Sure enough, we got paid zero. And I like, I was like, we uh, we didn't get any money out of it. You said they must have charged you fees, so you got to call Airbnb. That's not on us. And she, <laughs> so they kept, they keep in chunks of. See, like I said, that's the beauty. They they don't care if they cancel. They're still gonna get their money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that probably has to be fun. They have to probably have to, they need to keep that to keep their, uh, to keep up their payment system. You know what I mean? You know, that costs money. Um, oh know. yeah. Damn. It's oh, cool plus a certain, money. a certain, um, a friend of the show. Um, and, and uh, you've given her props before. Cause she went out, she, she goes, she goes after Airbnb pretty strong and tries to get every single penny that's coming for her. If anybody breaks anything and, and, you know, rightfully so. But she's she was she was flaunting she, she was putting it on the online that she she got like a thirty some odd thousand dollar payment from Airbnb. You, you know who I'm talking about. Anyways, another every time I talk to her, it seems like she's having a miserable time at it. She's making a shitload of money according to her, but she has she's always seems stressed out. And she told me that um, something happened at one of her units, and and like um, the, the the guests flooded the place, mm-hmm. and they and they left and didn't tell nobody or something. And and she said, well, messed up the floor, hardwood floors. They're all bowing up, and it's gonna cost like she said, said like forty thousand dollars worth of damage. Mm-hmm. And so she's sending off, and she's gonna fight, you know, tell Airbnb to to pay for this and that. And um, and I was like, you know, I I think Airbnb might. <laughs> If you keep doing these giant claims, they might be starting to get tired of you a little bit and might just drop you. And and I said, you know, I'm sure you're in the right every time you do it. But she's, oh, no, no, I think they're just too big a corporation. They don't care. They're just going to pay it. I was like, mm, I don't know. The insurance companies are pretty big freaking corporations. And if you keep making claims on them, they'll just drop your ass because <laughs> they should have some software 
that'll put some red flags and say, hey, this person keeps, you know, they do. making us pay 30000 40000 20000 I was like, yeah, let's just, let's just get rid of that person, you know? I'm sure they have something in place. See, and that's my thing. Man, that's why, I'm, uh, that's why I'm big on branding right there. I don't even want to go through that all the time. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather just – I have access to your credit card. You break some shit, I'm going to charge your credit card. I hope your limit's high. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I, that's how I kind of look at it. Now, yeah, yeah. You know, that's how I kind of – that's how I like the direct booking route, man. You get mm-hmm. access to their credit card. They're better guests. If you need to fix something, they'll let you in. Like, right now, we have a plumbing issue at one of our places. Um, water bills been sky high. But these people, they let us come in. They're direct booking guests. They let us come in. Like, yeah, but come on in. They take care of the place. You know, I'm, man, I don't know. Honestly, I'm sick of Airbnb. I tell people I'm not an Airbnb host. I'm a short-term rental operator. That shit. Just cater. And then cater into their reviews. Like, why? It's like a waste of time. You know, like people are, oh, I need to get a five-star review. Create a five-star company. Do that. You know what I mean? Because that, that's my biggest thing is I'm like done catering to their reviews. Like, I'm not dependent on them anymore, man. You know? And then you're right. They can, they can drop you. We've had people get kicked off the platform, you know, <laughs> you know, so like I use it as a tool, but that's about it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and, um, Federico, he, he, he's working out good for you, right? Yeah. And, um, and he, and he tell and he shows me like, like shows me like his, how he handles customer service. He's really good at it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so he's running our, you know, me and him, like I said, we went half on that Fort Worth unit. So he's, it's, it's cool. It's like this. Cause like that person that was complaining about the internet, I was like, man, you know, it's, he, they're there for their honeymoon weekend. Right. Mm. And not honeymoon, I'm sorry, not honeymoon, the anniversary. It's a young couple, young, young couple. And the first thing they said, we first we I, we warned them for it right away. Said, hey, you know, the internet seems to be down in the building. You know, we're working on it. And that we, oh yeah, yeah, yes. Please tell me ASAP because we really, really need internet. You know, they were like really adamant about internet. And I was like, yeah. watch out over there for your anniversary. You ain't gonna do no nothing else, <laughs> nothing else besides watching TV. <laughs> and um, anyways, so they asked us a bunch of times about the internet. And it sucked because it was out all the whole weekend until like Sunday evening to finally came back. Mm-hmm. They were already gone. And I was, I was even telling um, Federico, what do we do, man? Should we give him like, like 100 bucks off or 50 bucks? He goes, Tom, don't worry. Let me handle it. We already gave them, you know, an early check-in. And then I'm going to offer them an early checkout. I mean, a late checkout. And then at no cost, which no one was coming in that Sunday anyway. So it wasn't like we were giving them anything. He goes, and then we just, you know, apologize and just, just trust me. Trust me. Boom, boom, boom. They left. And they didn't ask for any money. They didn't ask for nothing. They didn't bitch about it. Airbnb. Air, he handled them. He handled them with, you know, r- nice respect. And then, you know, gave him a couple early check-in, late checkout, which didn't really cost us anything. Mm-hmm. And he saved us money because I'm automatically thinking I want to please the guests. But then, hey, he said, there's a way to please the guests without giving the money, you know. Exactly. So, yeah. So he's, 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 a, he's a guru at that customer service, man. He's a killer at it. Yeah. That's a big fact. Like a lot of people think you have to always compensate with money, man. You can just find little ways like late checkout, early late. Yeah. Late checkout, early checking, things like that. Things of that nature. Cause yeah, I, it, it, it is internet sometimes a pain. We'll go ahead. What were you saying? And I think what helped us too is um, I went by the condo that day because I was trying to, to check on the internet and check on the ring camera and stuff. And the, the cleaner was getting done and, and I, I noticed like on the counter, there was a whole, there was two like boxes of like, um, like beers and different assorted like seltzer alcohols and stuff. There was two, two cases of that, that the, that the previous guest had left and two bottles of champagne. <laughs> and so, uh-huh. and I was like, I was like, Oh, cool. I was like, they left all this. She's like, yeah. I was like, Oh, but did you want it? You know, cause you're the cleaner. I was whatever the cleaner wants to keep. I don't care. She's like, no, I don't even drink. You can, you, you can have it. That's fine. I was like, oh, cool. So I just, on our little setup for our, where, you know, the guests come in and they see the, the thing with the Wi-Fi and a little Texas thing. I, I put a bottle of champagne, you know, and happy anniversary, happy anniversary. And I, I took all the rest. And so that little touch, which I didn't even pay for the damn champagne. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think that saved our asses. So a free bottle of champagne we didn't pay for, plus an f- early check-in, which no one was there. It was already clean and late checkout. And yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was handled. 
Dang. So you, do you have long-term tenants in there now? Uh, the ladies in there this month is uh, one month. Yeah, she's yeah, there for yeah. a month. And so, um, but after that, we don't have anybody. Yeah, after that, we're, we, we're, we're, this month we're switching to long-term only. Okay. So, so we got a few days to figure this out and I'm reaching out to a lot of people trying to get it. I mean, even if, like I said, if we have to drop the price or whatever, we'll still make just a little bit of money, but we'll just, it'll be taken care of. We don't have to have a, you know, that, that hanging over us to try to get someone to, to pay our rent. You know what I'm saying? So instead of going into more arbitrage, you guys are going to the management side, right? The management side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm really studying that. I'm doing that um, short-term rental profits Academy, the one that Jasper and them, you know, offer. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm really, I'm really jumping into to learning how they, how they, how they do it, you know, cause, and then we're doing like masterminds with people that have, like I said, you know, hundred units or more, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, and it's really cool. It's, it's, it's valuable information. And I think, and, and, how the program is showing me is like, that's like the, the fastest way to, to grow your um, short-term rental business is to do a management company. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm cool with, I'm cool with, um, I'm cool with trying that out getting a few and seeing how it goes. And, and then Federico's, he's a, he's a guru with the systems, you know, we're doing this together. Mm-hmm. So, and I said, I'm, I said, dude, I mean, if we just focus on the Dallas Fort Worth area, I could be the boots on the ground if, you know, my mom, uh, my mom, my wife's a stay at home mom. So if, an, you know, if a unit needs something, she can get out there and, and handle it, you know, get them some supply. If, you know, whatever, whatever little problem arises, she can help out. And um, until, until we start looking at like that young dude I talked to today, the young hustler that's out there trying to get these wholesale deals. Maybe I'll get some of those on board and say, Hey, could you go out to this unit? Boom, boom, boom. I'll pay you whatever, 20 bucks to go do something. And, you know, just, just the boots on the ground. You, you told, you taught me that is, is the most important thing. So I said me between me and my wife, we could do that right now while we start growing our management, you know, company. And um, that's the goal of, of 2021. And it's the, yeah, it's, I guess to me, and, and, and it's just the, it's a low cost of entry because you're not, you don't have to, you know, lease out a place. You don't have to furnish a place and this and that. And you can just charge a percentage and run someone else's unit for them. And, and you can really scale fast that way. So I guess my question, so because you brought up a good point when you said you don't have to furnish the places. Are you going for targeting air, distressed Airbnb owners? I had thought about that. And, um, I had thought about that and thought about just just letting people know, like, you know, in my circles, like friends and family, stuff like that, if they want to get a unit and we can set it up for them and everything. I get questions all the time from guys at work. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, and now I'll have something to show them because it, you know, it's, it walks you through all the templates and then it shows like, this is my business. This is what we do, you know? And then, um, but I thought about that though, the, the distressed Airbnb beers or even reaching out to the people on Zillow trying to rent their houses and trying to get with them and say, Hey, you know, we can partner and we can make a lot of money on Airbnb or, or short or, um, you know, everybody says Airbnb, but you're you know, as a short term rental mm-hmm. or a corporate rental. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking right now. And why, and so how would you, how would you find distressed Airbnb hosts? Go to people with shitty reviews, I'm assuming. <laughs> no, no, it's funny you say that because, um, okay. So I, I told you I stayed at an Airbnb in Houston, actually in the same complex that I got my five. And this Airbnb was horrible. Mm. But th- those are opportunities like that you can take advantage of, mm. you know? Okay, but like, I know you can't reach out to them on Airbnb because then you, could get, you can get That's kicked true. off for that, right? Yeah. Unless you just keep making a new account every single day, and <laughs> no, it's a waste of time. Um, yeah, that's a good way how to get in touch with them. That's true because I've noticed most people on Airbnb haven't branded themselves, so they're, they're, it's usually like a Michael or a Tom. You know what I mean? Hosting mm-hmm. it. Um, that's a good way to think about it. Distressed yeah, Airbnb yeah, host. Yeah, I like Airbnb that. Host. Um, go to those Airbnb professional host groups. Yeah, yeah, that's a. A ton of people bitching on there all the time, right? But a lot of those people too. The only thing, the downside to that is most of them want to run it themselves because they're. Mm. That was the biggest piece of advice. Like, um, I was on I was on that um that Facebook group with the with the short term rental uh, profits academy, mm-hmm. and they 
and I was asking, you know, just, you know, conversing on one of the, one of the posts and, and one of the guys was saying, you know, just be careful and choose your clients wisely Woo-hoo. as you grow. Your- <laughs> yeah, fucking headache. I already know where that's going. Go ahead. Though. I already know where that's going. And I was like, Oh, it's like, so I take it. You've had, um, you know, you've had bad clients in the past. He goes, he goes, I was that bad client because I was an ex I was an Airbnb host and I let someone else run it. So I was in their ear every single day and I was like, Oh shit, I'm that bad client too. <laughs> so- <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta let that shit go and man. i'm like man and it's like he's like it'll you know at first you want to grab whoever wants to freaking use you as their management company you want to just mm-hmm. grab everybody but as you do it longer and longer you'll learn hey, yeah you don't want those ex-hosts or hosts yeah. you know you don't want those kind you want someone fresh to the game from california with a pocket full of money <laughs> yeah you know what though i would what i would do in your situation is um i get with like a realtor a relocation realtor in general and see it's too many people come to Texas, man. If you can make, get one of those uh, damn Frisco houses up there, they're managing that they're buying. Oh, that's where the money is, man. Cause that's where all those Californians are like buying houses at is in Frisco. Frisco. Frisco is the number one growing place in Texas. Holy smokes. Yeah. A good realtor would tell you that too. So yeah, it's matter of fact, one of my realtor friends just posted that he was like, Frisco is the number one city growing in texas so do something like that um you know the, yeah the airbnb co-host societies i noticed that now that i've been on clubhouse you know me and you we really we really talk about buying and arbitraging but that's really a big play mm-hmm. you know the co-hosting thing so now i have a question for you though since you decided to go the co-hosting route your barrier to entry is lower um have you decided to hop are you gonna still be buying properties or yeah, that's that's a goal of ours, and and I'm, I'm writing that down for my 2021 goals is to use profits to um, since we don't have to use the profits to buy to get to the next arbitrage, next yeah. arbitrage, we could use the profits. Cause I want to buy the three two cookie cutter houses in 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 areas that you're allowed to Airbnb in. That's mm-hmm. that's that's the bread and butter, you know, small three twos all day long. You'll never have knock on wood you'll never have an issue with that you buy a mcmansion you know who knows what's going to happen with that but if you buy a small cookie cutter three two entry level house that makes a great airbnb you can sell it if you need to sell it i mean that's 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 what um that's what i'm about all day man dude man i love i love burn houses nowadays man I'm, I'm i'm loving that strategy like i've seen there's so much power in doing that especially if you're doing short-term rentals my gosh just make sure your long-term numbers work and the numbers work out beautifully, beautifully. And you're mm-hmm. getting some wealth, you're getting all your money back. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of good strategies out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been talking to Federico about it cause he'll be, you know, he's already putting in his, for his, you know, to come here for his visa to come here and live mm-hmm. here. He's going to stay with us until he gets his feet on the ground. And so my goal is to have us as a full fledged company before he even touches ground here, you know, mm-hmm. have, we'll have a lot of money going, a lot of deals, a lot of places. And, and he wants to set up places too. him and his wife want to do design and stuff like that. And, and I said, what about buying real estate? He goes, that's his dream. He always wants to buy it and wanted to buy real estate. And I was like, well, shit, let's, let's do it, man. <laughs> sure. Definitely. man. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Just, I don't know when this whole pandemic things are going to blow over and I don't know when we're going to feel the effects of them printing off money, but I would say, man, try to stack up on some cash, sit for a minute. If you do buy, buy a good deal and, Man, I think a lot of opportunities are going to start presenting itself between now and 2022. Folks always need a place to live. I exactly. Mean, exactly. Yeah. You know, who knows what's going to happen to the stocks or Bitcoins or whatever the hell, but people, they always need a house, man. And Just gotta make sure it cash flows, man. Straight up. Yeah, make sure it cash flows. And, and that's the thing. Even if it don't, like right now, it doesn't cash flow real good. It's still... Over the long run, it's going to appreciate. It's 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 still good to have your money in properties because it's still going to appreciate, and while your money is just going to depreciate every single year, right? It's going to be worth less and less every single year. So, I mean, yes, of course, you want a cash flow. That's the name of the game. But even if you have one that you're barely, you know, making money or breaking even, you're still getting all the depreciation write-offs. You're still getting all the tax write-offs. You're still getting all the appreciation because a hundred thousand dollar house in 20 years is going to be worth 200,000. It's just, you know, yeah. Cause, cause our money's going to be worth shit in the future. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's so. true. It's it's interesting, you know. It's interesting. I I just tell people, yeah, man. I'm like uh, Brian thought I was being conservative until I told him my goals. I'm like, oh, I'm not. I'm being very aggressive. He's like, oh, you being. I was like, I'm being aggressive. I'm just being strategic. You know, just be strategic. You know, have a strategy and a goal. And uh, yeah, I mean, people that are doing the twenty percent down. You know, one of my coworkers sent me a deal today and told me to look at it. And they're doing twenty percent down, but whew, that twenty percent a lot. It's a, it's a cash flow of like four or five hundred bucks. No, no, no. It's it's a it's a it's a uh, multifamily property, but man, it's, oh, oh, it's like twenty percent of that. Like man, like a hundred k. Like, mm. like man, you know, you can buy six houses with that. <laughs> 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 Shit, like ten houses. Actually, you can buy a hundred houses with that. I was, I was like. You know, but that's a long strategy that you have to kind of teach. So I was like, never mind, you know, so. Right, right. You know, so, yeah, it's just, yeah, being very careful with how you're buying, you know, and just, you know, go go forward and do something. Fall, fail forward, I, I guess that's what you would say. Yeah, I mean, get into motion, you know. You you never know if you're going to end up going like, oh, I'm going to just do management or it might lead me to freaking do long-term housing, housing, housing for nurses or this. Or that. As long as you're in motion, you know, you, you, you all these opportunities start opening up for you. If you're just sedentary and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do, then you're not going to do nothing. Start becoming comfortable taking more risks. I'll say that. Just become comfortable taking more risks. Um, man, matter of fact, is funny thing is, man, I've been learning so much about this business credit game, man. I'm, I'm like real comfortable taking risks. So um, I changed up my strategy. I'm doing the uh, credit card thing with the timeshares again because I mastered how to do it. So, man, we actually going to Vegas in two months. And then we probably we already got enough for another vac- free vacation, too. So we're going to try to branch out a little bit. But um, the, the plug that American Express Gold card, man, that, that's the card to get right there. If you can get access to it, man, four times the points on purchases, dude. I'm like, woo, yeah, man. That's the, I thought it was the chase. It's the American Express Gold. <laughs> so I'm, uh, as soon as this refi is done and we're, we're right at the finish line, I'm, I got a bunch of little things I'm doing. I'm getting that American Express Gold. And BBVA is giving out 100K personal lines of credit if you don't have an account with them. So you might want to write that one down. Let me get that one too. And that'll be another little uh, vehicle to burst some houses with. So, yeah. And that's lines, a uh, business line of credit. Personal. Personal. Oh, personal line. Yeah. Business 100- line of credit. They'll give you 10% of your gross income on your business. So oh, nice. If you make 100000 a year, they will give you. 10 grand business line of credit. So oh, okay. make 220 grand. So they, they do two for 10%. So most places do Wells Fargo does 30%. So hmm. yeah, but yeah, man, but, definitely a few things to definitely look out, out for. I think you probably don't even need that. Cause you're doing the, uh, the co-hosting route, which I'm really interested. I want you to go ahead and do that so we can have more stuff to talk about in the podcast about that. Because I hear a lot of people asking me about co-hosts, and I'm like, man, I don't co-host. Mm-hmm. I don't do property. I do. I manage one out of all my places. I manage one, but that's mm-hmm. it. So, cool, man. It's been a great episode. Yes, sir. Good up. We will be. Yeah. yeah. Episode 148. <laughs> Two from 150. We almost there. Damn. Damn. This is cool. Yeah, man. It's good. It's good catching up with you. Good doing the show. We're learning a lot um we're me- making some great connections and um helping people out man yeah helping people jump into this wonderful world there's still a lot of room for growth yeah. now we, we always talk about saturation and stuff but like for example my job nobody does it i'm the only person there that does this right mm-hmm. and um and so i'm the, i guess by default i'm the expert at work so that's what i <laughs> people <laughs> ask me questions and stuff but um so I don't know about maybe at your job and some more younger people and a lot of people do it there or hardly anybody. I don't really talk about what I do at my job. Really? People know that I do real estate, but I don't just talk to them and tell them I have a full blown business. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I really kind of, I go in, do what I do and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've always been like that at jobs. Like, you know, I have little, I'm not a stickler's when it comes to nine to five people. I'm like, mm. it's kind of <laughs> like, 
to myself with certain shit, but you know, uh, it's like, you know, like some people I've, I've talked to, like, I don't know. I think they know that they know I do Airbnb, but I've talked to a few people about it and they're just like, you know, they kind of have the nine to five work hard every day, get what you want, you know? And I'm just like, yeah, cool. A nine to five mentality, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard to shake that. Hell yeah, it is. You know, that's that's the, people have it. I'm like, what's yeah. the strongest, the strongest drug on a, on the planet? I don't know. A paycheck. Ooh, I believe it. You yeah. know? So like, even how you say that, like, you know, you, you're the expert people come to you, you know, people like people know I do real estate. Like I tell them I do real estate, you know, and they know I have a real estate. I do real estate. Like that's why one of my coworkers they sent me that bill. I looked at it. Like, it looks like a good buy, you know? Um, mm-hmm. It just, she said the inspection was bad on the last one because someone dropped out of it was going to buy it and left it. And I was like a fourplex in, Gr- in Grand Prairie too. I'm mm. like, man, out here being mm. shit out of it. Yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Cause I'm like, hold on. Cause she was like, is Grand Prairie a good area? I'm like, she's like, I'm like for, yeah, I'm like, it's a pretty good area. She's like, yeah, it's fourplex. I'm like, damn. And I'm like, and I was like, Hey, if, if they dropped out of it, I'm like, go find out the repairs, get your realtor to send a contract over it to find out the repairs on the inspection report and drop it off your offer price. Mm. Be like, hey, either you fix this or take this lower offer. So mm-hmm. I'd do it. But, you know, some dumbass Californian probably going to go in there and buy it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's messing up our game over here. Man. <laughs> Don't let them get to Arkansas. Nah, nah, they ain't going to go there. They probably <laughs> no. Well, actually, I've been noticing people from the northwest go there, but they don't go to the part of Arkansas, man. Oh, they okay. go to the outskirts of the hood. They ain't trying to go. There. <laughs> <laughs> There's money in the hood, straight up. Yeah, but yeah, cool. this is a good episode 148 of your favorite Airbnb short term rental share economy podcast. Um, yes, well, yeah, you can find us on Live Let Thrive at on IG. You can find me on Clubhouse. You can find us both on Clubhouse. I'm always, I'm always on there in an Airbnb group, usually on stage. Um, yeah, email us at liveletthrive at gmail.com. People, a lot of people have been sending me questions. Um, and by the way, we have some big, huge guests coming in. I'm not going to surprise. I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll just say some big, huge guests that y'all know who are very popular will be coming on the show. We got some real big guests, so definitely stay tuned into that. Uh, anything else you had, Steve? um thanks for listening all these years that we've been doing this and um thanks for staying with us on this journey and then and helping us hooking us up helping us out and, and networking we yeah we love we love our fans and and then they they're throwing us love on the oh leave a leave a review on the on the itunes that that helps us a lot definitely so we, yeah we've been they've, they've been leaving some good ones so that that motivates us to keep going definitely definitely thank you for continuing to listen all right we'll see y'all later we are out. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live, Let, Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.